This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. What do you got? Let me see. That's wild. It, it yeah. won't even fit. Got oh, it fit my pinky. Oh, damn. That went on my biggest finger. My name's Anthony Padilla, and I spent today with Hassan Piker to uncover the truth about how amassing over 2 million followers on Twitch and becoming the top political pundit of our generation has changed the trajectory of his life, and how nearly everything he does is considered so controversial that entire hate campaigns have been constructed against him. Hello, Hassan. What's going on? <laughs> you are gaining an average of 1 million followers a year on Twitch. Okay. Right? I, I don't know. <laughs> now, over the past two years, each year you've had a high of almost a quarter of a million concurrent viewers. Why do you think so many people are drawn to watch you? People are not very honest about why things are terrible. Everybody, for the most part, feels a little worse overall year over year. I think a lot of people feel angry. I try to direct their anger at the system rather than individuals and explain to them why they feel the way that they do. Use that anger that you feel Boy, towards months, more baby, productive you. avenues. Instead of getting fucking upset at wealth inequality in the system, try to change the system. I uh, have an empathetic worldview that centers around uplifting marginalized people on not only the basis of identity, like uh, whatever kind of marginalization that they experience, but also class which is something that is devoid from the American conversation most of the mm -hmm. time. As long as you are willing to learn, as long as you're willing to change, then you're welcome. I'm, I'm going to talk to you and yeah. try to educate you. Right, right. Because yeah, I think that that is how you change people's minds. And I think I've been relatively successful at, mm -hmm. you know, deprogramming a lot of people's like prior uh, confirmations, mm -hmm. uh, prior uh, attitudes and beliefs. Do you think this is part of why you are seen as such a controversial figure? Yeah, for sure. This is like centuries of, of wiring people to certain way. On the one hand, someone can sedate you into thinking like, no, everything is normal, it's the best way. And then on the other hand, you have someone who's like, no, you should be angry at the system. It kind of spoils the game for a lot of people who would rather maintain that stability there's a concerned effort of like presenting me as more controversial than i actually would be yeah. it's the age-old narrative that uh you have been able to create which is socialist but uh, he's a hypocrite because he has uh, nice things mm -hmm. like that's unacceptable it's a poverty call it's supposed to be a poverty mm -hmm. call it's stupid can you list some of the controversies that you've been a part of. Oof. I don't know if we have time, sure. but uh, yeah, I know just, you gotta go stream for 12 hours. So <laughs> yeah, we can just like do a full list. <laughs> One of my first big controversies was America deserved 9-11. I'm saying it. America deserved 9-11, dude. I'm Boy, sure lots so of people much. watching right now are happy to hear that I have someone on the show that said America deserved 9-11. I mm -hmm. talked about all this stuff, and that obviously was the reason why I said it's blowback. Like, we funded the same people that did 9-11, and we continue to work with the same people, the government, that uh, played a way, way more fundamental role in 9-11 than Afghanistan or Iraq. Literally, there was like eight documentaries, I think, that came out in the 20th anniversary of 9-11 that described all of that. So I had a lot of my friends even, they were like, I kind of hated what you had to say back then, but now I totally understand what you were talking about. Why do you think it is that these documentaries can say the exact same thing as you, but not get any blowback? Because they didn't say it in my language. <laughs> like, let's be real. I mean, I'm gonna be fair here. Okay? Really? They didn't say America deserved 9-11? No. no, they didn't. Do you regret it's... using the language? No. Specifically? Not even, no, not even remotely. I think it was a matter of being taken out of context. It very quickly went into a subreddit. They blasted it off there and then Keemstar picked it up and then Fox News picked it up. Mm. And it became a huge news story in a 24 hour cycle. And they think that I am a supporter because I'm Muslim and I'm socialist, like I'm a communist terrorist sympathizing Muslim. This is what the, what the, what the overarching narrative was. Mm -hmm. And not that like America's foreign policy is directly responsible for 9-11. There was a period of, of stability and not being canceled for a while. Post 2020, the election cycle ended, some positive coverage came out of me, you know, uh, doing well and like i guess leading the zoomer flock in politics and immediately that's when people are like no f this guy mm -hmm. <laughs> it's time again what ended up happening is yeah i bought a house i'm sorry i'm that's, sorry that's guys i mean i know i saw i saw the headlines yeah up. the irony of course is that like i've been living in the same neighborhood for like eight years mm -hmm. so instead of renting i bought a house and that was deemed unacceptable by people <laughs> no one in my community was like oh man i'm giving this guy five dollars a month you're mean to tell me that he's buying stuff with that money no no no, no. we wanted you to to go fund other people's GoFundMes. yeah and it's like 
which I do some public and, and, you know, most private. Now I do it more publicly mm -hmm. because I, I feel kind of gross about it, but like, it's just, you have to do it. People were saying like, why don't you lobby the government for socialism? Very funny that people think like I have a fraction of the power yeah. that like literally any like run of the mill hundred millionaire has. Right. I don't even have a fraction of that power. Mm -hmm. I had a really old and still have a really old Toyota Camry 20, uh, 2010. So, uh, V6. Damn, you went all the way though. Yeah, that, so I had that for like 10 years. I'm 30, I wanna get a nice car. Mm. I have enough money. To Midlife get. crisis, age range. Yeah, I, I wanted to get it before. I wanted to get ahead mm. of that. So, you know, I got a, I got a Porsche Taycan. I did it publicly this time because I was like, I gotta do this privately because yeah. there's no reason. It's gonna seem like you're trying to hide it. And then they were still mad because last time they were like, he was trying to hide that he had a house. like. Mm piece of shit hypocrite and then they were like he did this publicly he's flexing <laughs> there is no right way to use to spend your money no really. absolutely not there's just it's more so about trying to figure out another new way to be like i don't like this person yeah here's how uh, i'm going to justify that what was your childhood like? I was a nerdy kid. Born in the US, then moved to Turkey pretty yeah. quickly. I, I was in a Marabou. It's America. like a weeboo for like a wee. Amer mm. Yeah. You know, I, I would like put my hands on anything that was like American and I'd love it. I would like learn about what it. What were your favorite American things to get your hands on? Snacks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Desserts. Yeah. Oreos. <laughs> Oreos. Yeah. The American delicacy. You joke because like you have an abundance of it. Yeah. But 100% yeah. like when I came to America for the summers, I would spend every waking moment that I had at borders. I would sit there and I would read every comic book I could because I was like, this is free. No one is stopping me from reading these. I'm the reason it's not Jeff Bezos. I brought down Barnes and Noble and borders. Jeff yeah. Bezos, uh, I did the it. product of Hassan Piker. Yeah, I'm as, I'm as brave as wow. warrior. And canceled. <laughs> yeah. What was life like in Turkey? I come from a relatively affluent family and i did see uh, a shit ton of income uh, inequality especially when i went to public school in turkey i went to school with like the neighborhood gardener's kid i think that was the first time where i was like oh damn this is like kind of fucked up that you have something that yeah. you were just born into this is just a kid like me but they're in a situation it seems like they don't have all the cool stuff that I can have. That definitely, uh, you know, impacted my perspective a little bit. But other than that, I mean, it was all right. Turkey was, it was fine. I just, I spent most of my time drawing, playing mm -hmm. video games. Do you still draw? No. I gave it up because my dad was like, you need to become a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer. This drawing stuff is great, but you can't make money doing it. He wanted me to pursue my passion while also simultaneously telling me that like, but like you also need to make a living, You'll, you'll starve. That's what I did. I focused on, uh, you know, I focused on getting a degree and now I stream on Twitch. <laughs> so it doesn't even matter. What first drew you to politics? You live on that side of the planet. You're constantly paying attention to what America is doing mm -hmm. because America's actions in the Middle East impact your life. It was for survival first and foremost. And I think that's why a lot of people pay attention to me on an international level, because they're because I'm covering American politics from the point of view of someone who didn't grow up here. I was definitely bullied a lot. When we were growing up, being a nerd wasn't like super cool, right? No, no it yeah. wasn't. Now it is. Now you're like, you got like kids on TikTok who are jacked as they're like, yeah, I'm a nerd. No, I remember um, secretly talking about Pokemon with my friends in elementary school because the other kids would look at me weird and, and you know, shun me. Yeah. Otherwise. It was not like a sick no. thing. So then imagine being that, but in Turkey, where they have no frame of reference even. They just like looked at me like I was just some weirdo. I was kind of bigger. I wasn't as big as I am now. So I was always worried. And I think people saw that from where like bullies saw that and were like, the I'm gonna capitalize on that insecurity. I'm gonna take down like a big guy. How do you think bullying has, has shaped who you are now? It, it, it taught me that it's, the reason why they're doing it is because they are deeply flawed. Did you see that when you were young? I think I saw it when I got older. I realized looking back that it was their own personal insecurities. Growing up, you also always questioned Authority. Was that something that was instilled within you? Is that something that developed? I kept going with the with streak I had in me of like not wanting uh, to, to live under the oppressive thumb of my parents. <laughs> Even though they gave you the privileged life that you 100%, enjoyed. yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, exactly. I think that there was like flaws in their parenting, obviously, that I recognize now. They wouldn't let me 
be on MSN Messenger because they thought like a pedophile would, uh, you know, steal me. Can't even communicate with my friends. Like this sucks. Yeah. They wouldn't let me play online games. So I had to like find ways around that. Of course, uh, growing uh, under the Erdogan regime's inception in Turkey, you know, a 20 plus year long uh, regime now, I realized like, oh shit, this sucks. Like I do not like conservatism right. at all. I right. despise it. Came to the United States in 2009 to go to college. And I wanted to go to Miami because it's nice weather and I wanted to party. So I went to the University of Miami for a year, living like this sheltered life with my family to like being 18 years old and being treated as an adult because you're in college. Developed an unhealthy uh, uh, attitude about alcohol. I was a promoter in Miami, University oh, of Miami. I uh, promoted for nightclubs there. It was just like a way for me to be able to go to nightclubs and drink for free. These were not nightclubs and they were plus 18 avenues, ventures, allegedly. Oh, cause you were 18, holy f <laughs> You were not the 18 year old mm -hmm. that did not get the 18 yes. year olds to not go to the club. Yes, exactly. How did your experience in the US compare to your expectations? Because the freedom, the abundance, like everything was great. You know, I'm a degenerate, I'm a hedonist. It was awesome uh -huh. on all of those avenues. And then I became an adult. Uh -huh. Once I left college, I was like, oh, this sucks. I came to LA, was very lucky. I couldn't find a job, but at least my uncle had uh, an opportunity for me to intern for his YouTube channel. My salary was abysmally low, living in the kitchen of a fraternity house. That's when I was like, oh shit, maybe this like America stuff that they were talking about, like maybe it was bullshit. Midway through, you know, my content creation uh, part, I started getting better at it. The internal recognition was not there at all though. Uh, so that was like a big chip on my shoulder and it constantly felt like an uphill battle. So I was like, I need to do something for myself. And because of that, I, I guess I was like constantly, constantly working on improvement that uh, because of those goals, I was like too busy to even care about, you know, what my, what my financial circumstances were. January, 2020, I started the election cycle. COVID caused everybody to stay indoors. Yeah. George Floyd uh, protests were happening and everyone wanted to understand what was going on. And they realized like, oh, there's a dude who's literally live all the time. This and then you were like, cool, 3,600 hours this year. Yeah. Like, full throttle. That's like, like yeah. 10 hours a day. Pretty much like waking up, streaming, going to sleep, streaming. How do you deal with the waves of negativity? I internalize it and I just, <laughs> ugh, I hold on I to can it. See all that. I can see a lot of tension in your shoulders yeah. right now. You just I, hold it right here. Yeah, I hold it right here. And then I, and I work out and I get angry and then I, you know, mm. fire off on some random unsuspecting mm. person in my chat. I don't have time to pre-watch every video that I want to play on stream because I'm too busy f***ing your mother. Sorry. Are you ever trolling on purpose? Oh, always. And do people believe that you actually believe the things that you're saying when you play the conservative character? Brother, this is a right-wing broadcast. You mean to tell me a libtard would be a Korea veteran? I hope they do. Like yeah. Hank Pecker. I, I want them to believe that that's like a real person. Yeah. They're conservative. Pecker, I did not know his name. Hank Pecker. Yeah. That's my name. I'm in here in a libtard studio with bisexual lighting. <laughs> I did it just I did yeah. it just for you, Hank. People sometimes have a hard time understanding what my political position is because they're, they're so used to people being like, I love the Democrats or I love the Republicans. And I'm yeah. like, both of them, they're both terrible. When people hear me like absolutely shitting on Nancy Pelosi. They yeah. probably think I'm like a Republican. But then also on top of that, when I do that accent, they're like, wait a minute, this guy. You don't see AOC yeah. going out there playing a Republican character. Well, she's a politician, <laughs> you know? But people look at you like you're a politician. I know, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm not. I am <laughs> literally a dumb himbo on Twitch. Like I make jokes about, you know, Chrissy. Yeah. Yeah, which, you know, we can understand why. <laughs> so it, it, it is ridiculous that people like hold yeah. me to that standard that I myself yeah. do not hold myself to. I, like, yeah. I see myself as an entertainer, a worldview, and, and I'm honest about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, ultimately, I also like to have fun. And I think that people, uh, people want you to be serious all the time. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, no, we, we want to talk about cussy. Okay, yeah. we, we want to get deep in that cussy. Oh, God, I just, <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> Leading up to this interview, I was a little nervous. I'm like, Hassan, this this guy is intimidating as for some reason. 
Have you been told that before? Yes. I don't know why. I think I'm like a, I'm like a teddy bear, but I mean, it could be the the six foot four uh, bodybuilder demeanor. That's literally part of the reason why I paint my nails. I think it makes me look less intimidating. Is that why you wear a choker? <laughs> I like accessorizing. I think men don't have a lot of options to accessorize. Yes. It's messed up. I think accessorizing sucks, and men sh men shouldn't do it. No, you have some <laughs> sick jewelry. What do you got? Let me see. You want that's that's all for one finger. You have three for three for one, one finger. finger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's wild. It, it yeah. won't even fit. It, what, are your fingers too meaty? Yeah. You got oh, it sausage? fit my pinky. Oh, damn. That went on my biggest finger. Do you pride yourself in kind of shattering the expectations for, uh, you know, party divides and party expectations? I definitely transcend beyond, like, uh, you know, party loyalty, for sure. Yeah. It's not a surprise to me when Democrats and Republicans regularly find bipartisan consensus for things that actually matter mm -hmm. materially. Things that we disagree on are really impactful and really important, except they are what is known as wedge issues, mm -hmm. created specifically for the purpose of causing division and making it seem like a party is different than the other party. Mm -hmm. It's all cultivated. It's, it's mass outrage and mass panic that you're causing that you're creating, creating this division so you can get people to vote for you rather than the other side. Why do you think everything is so divisive? It sounds like a lot of the beliefs of Americans in general do line up, but there is this idea that we are 100% divided on everything. The different kinds of cookies that you buy at the aisle is owned by the same company, but they gotta make it seem like they're different, right? In the grand scheme of things, like those wedge issues do have serious impact on the, the people that we're talking about, whether it's yeah. immigrants, uh, whether it's trans kids, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, you know gay kids, whether it's uh, women that want to get an abortion or have uh, autonomy over their own mm -hmm. bodies. Mm -hmm. You know, these are, these are definitely things that are impactful to those individuals, but ultimately they're perfectly crafted in a way that, that creates division. And I noticed you mentioned some things and then you were like, well, not everyone. Do you feel like that's a reflex for you now after streaming for so many hours for you to kind of over explain your position on things now? Yeah, there is that uh, type of speaking Yeah, where uh, you reflexively defend positions that like no human being would ever think you have to defend. And I do that all the time. I have to constantly and consistently qualify every single sentence that I put out there especially because I am constantly under the the mindset that there are people out there that are watching every single thing that I'm saying and doing and will use that to to clip it in a different way mm -hmm. and and make it seem like I believe in the the opposite of what I actually believe. It's insane that I have to do that, but it's just the part of the job. Mm -hmm. It's the way I see it. Most normal people, they probably think like, what the f why does this guy keep like saying he he hates Putin. Well, it's because like, you know, people will literally say, no, you love Putin. Right. And right. we'll cut it in a way to make it seem like that. You, you say you like oranges and someone will pop out of somewhere and be like, oh, that means you hate apples. Like, how dare you? I love apples. You are angry at me for eating apples. Why do you hate right. me? I have a, a Vladimir Putin is bad sign. It's like <laughs> flipping on the corner of the screen all day, every day. So no one can clip it and be like, see? No, but they still do. They still clip it. Even when it has the- Yeah, because it doesn't matter what you see in front of your eyes is unimportant as long as like you have a preconceived notion of a particular person. And I think it kind of breaks people's minds when they see someone like you posing with a gun. Before we get more into that, I wanna let you know that you can watch other episodes with prominent figures like I spent a day with Mia Khalifa, Corpse, Amaranth, Dream, and so many others here on YouTube or on the completely uncensored podcast version of the show by clicking the link down in the description below. And I'd also like to thank Honey for sponsoring this episode and supporting us in continuing to improve this series. Honey is the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one that it finds to your cart so you don't have to stare at that empty discount code box every time you're at checkout because if Honey finds a coupon that works, a Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupon. And Honey supports over 30,000 stores online, ranging from tech to popular fashion brands and food delivery. Honey has personally saved me a f ton of money when I venture into my online buying trance, including the new shoes Hassan and I will be wearing on our way to Himbo Haven. Again, Honey is free and it installs in just a few seconds. So if you wanna do yourself a solid and also 
support this series, get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Padilla. Again, it's free. And I'm only gonna say this one more time, so listen closely. Go to joinhoney.com slash Padilla and you'll be directly supporting this series. Now back to the world of Hassan Biker. And I, I think it kind of breaks people's minds when they see someone like you posing with a gun. You know, they're like, oh, uh, I guess that means that you are uh, alt-right. And then you're saying these things Maybe. that are against that. And then they're like, uh, I don't know what that means. You're right. I mean, I, I, I enjoy shooting guns. I think guns are fun. Mm -hmm. They're, but they're murder weapons. They're, that's the only purpose of a gun is to murder. We got to dispel this notion that like liberals don't like guns. I think liberals like guns too. It's just like America. We have more guns than we have people. Yeah. It's crazy out here. It's it's bananas. They should definitely stop that. Put the toothpaste back in the tube. It's very hard to do. I tried it. We got to do it. We got to yeah. figure it out. The, and it goes back to, again, our lack of community and our alienation from our labor and our alienation from one another. The only type of cultural signifier that we have is our commodity consumption. Mm -hmm. What you're wearing, what you consume, going to Applebee's. Mm -hmm. Are you a fan of Diet Coke or are you a fan of Diet Pepsi? And in many ways, these things become attached to identity. Yes, that is exactly what it is. And guns are a part of that. I love guns, brother. You know, I'm a gun guy. That's the Republican dude version of a Gucci. The idea that like people are gonna come and break into your house, that's why you need an AR-15 for self-defense is idiotic because anyone who has ever shot a gun knows the AR-15s are terrible for home defense. You will literally blow through eight of your walls and probably shoot the neighbor if you try to do a self-defense with an AR-15 mm -hmm. unless you are getting uh, broken into your home by like a Nicaraguan death squad. And then they're gonna make a movie about your life. Unless you're John Wick, you don't need to do self-defense. A gun, a pistol will do, um, or or better than that, the best uh, self-defense tool is the shotgun. You are constantly discussing and questioning beliefs. I try. I, I, I question myself a lot too. People say I'm confident. I have crippling self-doubt. Like so much self-doubt. What if I'm getting something wrong? What if I will get this wrong? What if I'll get that wrong? I don't want to misinform people. And I do get things wrong. Like the greatest example of this is the invasion of Ukraine. I was incredibly confident that Russia would not invade Ukraine because of all of the reasons why that invasion is going south right now. I, I demonstrated a level of confidence that I should not have. When you deviate away from that and you get something wrong, people that want to be right will never let you forget that and will constantly harp on it and will constantly use that to like undermine your perspective. There were a lot of people that for the first couple days of the invasion, when I was doing my coverage, would come in specifically to be like, hold this L. I'm like, dude, there are people dying on screen. They want to celebrate your loss? Yeah, what the is wrong with you? You must get recognized a lot. Yeah, I do get recognized, yes. I love it. I don't have any issue with it. I owe everything to my fans, everything. I would be nothing without them. And I your would, haters. I'm not my haters. <laughs> them. They can they can rot in hell. Okay? They get you views. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I don't want their views. That's the one thing I realize is that if you're constantly on the internet, a lot of your interactions are unfortunately painted by those people that uh, can can swarm a comment section, make you think, oh man, I wonder how many other people now feel this way about me even though it's completely untrue. And then I go outside and then I meet people and I talk to them. And then I remember again, like, oh no, these people on the internet are not real people. But ultimately I, yeah, I just got to maintain that attitude always. And, yeah. And think about, you know, the real world. And in yeah. the real world, either A, no one gives a shit or B, if they do, they're usually very positive. Mm -hmm. Never had a negative interaction with someone in the real world. Yeah. I mean, I hope that doesn't change, but when you reach a certain size, you do have the opportunity to make changes in people's lives. And it's something that I often take for granted or forget about, but it's, it's awesome to see it in real life in public. That's what makes it worth it. What's next for Hassan? Is there anything you could hint? Just what I've been doing, honestly, yeah. I, I just, Everybody always asks, like, what are you going to do next? What are you going to do next? Like, have you, you been offered a show yet? Yeah. Yeah. And I have plenty yeah. of times, and yeah. I don't like that. I don't want to. I love what I do. I'm very fortunate. You know, I love having a place where I can go to every day and talk about politics every day. I don't want to. I don't, I don't want to expand. I don't want to grow. I'll grow, but as long as I can grow in my own pace, as long as I can continue doing what I'm doing mm. and not change that, not be beholden to a larger company, 
or investors mm. or anything like that, then I'm fine. I'm fine yeah. with that growth. Well, there you have it. I spent today with Hassan Piker and it's made me realize how everything we do, wear and believe all make up our identity. And anything that threatens those things can feel like a personal affront to our well-being. Maybe the world would be filled with much less rage if we were all encouraging of remaining open-minded and evolving, even if it were to threaten those things that we once thought defined us. That's my favorite thing is like when people are like, you're a product of nepotism. It's like, yes, I am. I recognize it. And I talk about it regularly. Mm -hmm. Dude, nobody would watch you if you're not hot. I'm like, thing to say. I like how they can't help but compliment you yeah, while they're trying to like, criticize you. Yeah, they'll be like, oh, dude, you're so successful. <laughs> you're so fucking hot and, and successful. Like, and Thanks. I mean, I, I, I do. I do recognize that I'm like an incredibly fortunate person. And incredibly handsome. Well, I don't think so, but thank you. <laughs> But that's nice of you to say. Hey, um, you know, from one himbo to another, I got I to gotta lay it down. Thank you. Yeah.